want in this tutorial we're going to go ahead you know, and create our inventory system basically that has scriptable objects that we can collect and compare those to a door system to make sure we can, we can open and unlock it now, first thing we want to do is go over to filebase.gamedavhq.com let's go ahead and go get keys 01 through 04 and we're going to get the sewer doors pack then I'm going to go ahead and create a scriptable object class. And in here, I need to change model behavior to scriptable object. And then I also need to create the asset menu with the new key item and that new key item being the key item. Then I just need to create the variables such as the item name, the item description, and also the sprite if it did have one. Uh, you, fun fact, you can also add a text area. So it actually makes the description larger where you put the item name uh, description in, which is pretty freaking awesome. All right, next we're gonna create our inventory manager. We want to be able to access our inventory manager everywhere, so we're going to set this up as a singleton. This is kind of like the basic setup by setting it static as an instance, and uh, we'll just kind of run through this real quick. Then we're gonna go ahead and create a list, and this list is the item list. This is what where we're going to drop all of our scriptable object key items into this list. And this will be what we hold as our inventory. Next thing what we want to do is let's go and create a key item component. We're going to attach this to our keys. So each one of our keys will have a component and we're just going to attach our scriptable object. So bronze key will get the bronze key scriptable object, gold key will get the gold key one, etc, etc. Then we're going to create a public function called collect key item. So whenever this key item is picked up, we can identify what is the item name and it's going to pull that item name from the scriptable object. So when I go over to let's say the uh, bronze key and I click on it, it's getting its name from the scriptable object that I attached to the key item script. That's uh, what the script logic does is it's a uh, data container. So next I want to go ahead in here and my uh, inventory manager and I want to add this key to my inventory. So I'm going to grab whatever scriptable key comes in and I'm just going to add it to my list. So when I pick up the bronze key, you could see that gets added a scriptable object to my inventory manager. Now there is an issue if we don't set it to where we're uh, checking to see if it already contains it, we can actually clone items. So if there were, let's say three bronze keys and we clicked on all of them, we would add three bronze keys. But this way, if there's a bronze key already in your inventory, you're not going to add a new one. Then we want to go over to our key item and we want to destroy it and let's go ahead and add a sound effect. So kind of like normal, we know when we pick up something, it disappears and it makes noise. Going to pick up bronze key, picked up the gold key. Excellent. Now we're going to go over and create our lock and key system. First thing we want to do is we want to make sure we can interact with it. So we're going to have a public function called check lock state. Then we're going to create an enum. And this enum is going to be part of our switch statement, which is basically I want to check if it is locked, unlocking, or um, currently unlocked. Then we're going to call that uh, lock state current state. We're also going to add the string and that's the name of the key that is required. And we're also going to check to see if it's locked on start. Now let's go ahead and create our switch statement. Our switch statement is basically going to check if all, which of the three states is it? Is it locked, unlocked, or unlocking? And if it's in any of those states, it's going to run a function. So if it's uh, currently locked, it's going to run the lock status. If it's unlocked, it's going to run the lock unlocking stat unlock status. And if it's unlocking, it's the unlocking status. So you know you just set up your simple case statement. Is if the lock state is locked or unlocked or whatnot, you're going to do the corresponding function down below. So the case statement up above is just to tell you what you're going to do. And these functions are going to be what is executed. So we're just going to make sure we debug these so we know what we do in runtime. Then we need to do a check. We need to go to the inventory manager and we're going to create a new function called use key. And we're passing in the string of the key that we need to identify in the manager. So in use key manager, we're going to do a bull check. We're going to return that if it's true, if the current, you know, if we currently have in our array an item with the name of bronze key and it matches that string value that we matched in, then we know it's true. So we're going to uh, go ahead and remove that object and we're going to return true to our function. Otherwise, we're going to return false. And if it's true over here, then our current state's going to change to 
uh, lock state unlocked and we are going to also change our status to unlocking. And if the door is unlocking, we want to do some sound effects. We want to make sure that if it's locked, we play the lock sound. If it's unlocked, uh, unlocking, we'd say the door is unlocking. And if it's open, we play the opening door sound. Locked, um, picked up this silver key. Locked, I pick up my bronze key. It opens it. And now I'm in the new state. Next thing we want to do is make sure we get that animation in here so we can actually see the door open. So we're going to connect the door animator, do a simple animation to open that door, and do a trigger that says Select my bronze key, unlocking, now that opens. Now I still can't walk through this though. Now to get rid of that box collider that we currently have, we just need to find that box collider at start. Go ahead and get the component of the box collider at start and then we're just going to disable it uh, that component after we unlock the door grab my bronze key unlock now i'll be able to walk through it. and now i'm able to walk through it now for a little bit of cleanup let's just say we don't want this to be locked on start or we do want to we can with a bull check determine are we going to have this door unlockable or not if it is uh checked to say unlock at the beginning then we're just going to skip all this logic and just open the door new to coding feel like those tutorials are speaking an alien language yeah we've been there and that's why we built game hq a place where you can actually learn by building our monthly membership gives you access to 900 plus hours of hands-on training from 2d to 3d vr ar first person and third person games plus you get access to 12,000 assets in daily check-ins one-on-one tech support and live workshops six days a week where we cover the stuff you want to learn we're not just developers we're gamers too and we love helping people turn that first line of code into something special come hang out with us and let's build something together